Okay, I'm back. So basically, welcome to day two. And we're getting started with uh, a lot of forgiveness, forgiveness for ourselves, forgiveness for others, forgiveness for maybe even financial mistakes, forgiveness for mistakes we may have made in the past or if we've been wronged by an employer or a friend or a family member, there's all kinds of situations that happen in life where we can find ourselves holding a grudge. And I want uh, to encourage each of you to adopt the attitude of growth. And remember this, new level, new devil. Every time you grow past where you're at, you will face some new things in your life that will hold you back if you allow it. Now, a highly successful entrepreneur is capable of shortening the amount of time that they're derailed. So for me, sometimes I would, I mean, there was probably a time in my life where I could have, where I was probably derailed for about three years, <laughs> if I'm honest. And then I made this decision that if I was going to become successful, I needed to rein it in. I needed to get control of the, the wild horses running through my head. And these thoughts were crazy, right? So they could, um, my thinking, which I started to call stinking thinking, it's the lies that we tell ourselves to keep ourselves stuck and safe, right? Because like I shared with you yesterday, you left the if you left the cave, then the lions or bears would eat you. And so our brains are hardwired to protect ourselves and keep us in our comfort zone. So even the, on this level of personal growth and spiritual growth, you might find resistance happening in all different forms. It could be um, you get sick. You know what? This is very common. People who, who are making the decision to grow can come down with the flu. They can come down with a the cold. They can be derailed as a result of taking these steps because there's something that shifts in the body. And I truly believe that we are um, spiritual beings having a human experience and that everything is interconnected. You, it, you know, studies show time and again that our bodies are energy, literally electrical currents going through the body. And so it should be of no surprise when we shift things, even on a spiritual level, that it can affect our body. So I want you to be paying attention this week and then over the next week, where do these feelings come up for you? Where do you feel them in the body? Um, sometimes memories will resurface. Don't go into like the resistance when something like that happens. Um, and then take the time that you need to take to process through it. Because I've learned that people get stuck in their businesses when they are stuck in their personal life and spiritual growth. So if that's where you found yourself, I'm going to encourage you to stay on this path as uncomfortable as it may be <laughs> and to stay committed to the process because sometimes that's, I mean, I, I believe that every time we're ready to break through, you got to have a breakdown and new level, new devil. You hear me use these phrases a lot because I've chosen different phrases in my life or, you know, to apply to my life because they seem to be true for me. So take them or leave them. But today, what I want you to do is, um, as you're reflecting on your, your, your journey here, I want you to think about, think about what it is that you want to create. So the reflection I'm going to have you do today is what is it that you are wanting to create? And how do you want to feel in 10 years looking back on your life? How do you want to feel in five years looking back on your life? And one year, even 90 days from now. Think about that. So we're in April now. That would take us April, May, and to, to the end of the June, just before 4th of July. So how do you want to feel? What do you want to have accomplished by the 4th of July? And you can take it out all the way, like I shared, to one year, five year, 10 year. What do you want to feel? What do you want to experience? Where do you want to be giving of your time and money? Where do you want to support others? How do you want to be serving others? What do you want to be known for? These are questions that, they're the big questions. They're easy to avoid, aren't they? Those of you that are have your videos on, you can nod your heads <laughs> if that's true. It's so easy to avoid. And by the way, I'm sitting in my car, which is why I'm not turning on my video. <laughs> because I have to work my business on the go. I'm actually sitting outside the library while my boys, which we homeschool, are picking out their books for the week. And um, I thought, well, 
we're just going to do this from the car. So anyway, think about those big questions because I feel like once we have some clarity around these bigger questions, then it, it, we're able to make better choices with our time. And we're able to discipline our thoughts, our words, and our actions as a result. Because if they're not lining up with what you want to be experiencing on that timeline, your 10-year plan, your 5-year plan, your 1-year plan, your 90-day plan, or even by Christmas, if, if your thoughts, words, and actions today aren't lining up with that vision then, do you see? And like I, I said yesterday, who's the person you need to become to achieve those goals? and to live that life and to feel that accomplishment, to feel like you're giving like you are at that point in your life. Who, does, who do you need to become today, now? Because our thoughts create our reality. Write this down. What you focus on grows. This applies to your thinking thinking, right? So if you spend the majority of your time paying attention to what everybody else is doing, or if you spend the majority of your time calling up people to find out the latest scoop on X, Y, and Z, whatever's going on in you know, their family, their friends, whatever, right, their business. If you're spending your time like that, how can you, you won't have the time to create what you're meant to create. Do you see? You have to become highly disciplined in the way that you invest your time. Because one thing I've learned is we never get time back. It is our greatest asset. We never get time back. And it is our greatest asset. The time that you spend, and think about it, it's almost like a bank account. You spend scrolling on Facebook or you spend watching TV and just zoning out. That's time that you could have been a creator rather than a consumer. And so I want you to make that choice every morning to adopt this new affirmation. I am a creator. I am a creator. And that that affirmation will start to pop up for you throughout your day as a result of affirming that truth every morning. And you're going to catch yourself in where you are consuming instead of creating. One of the ways that I used to be a consumer was um, I was a pretty tired mom <laughs> dragging my butt around town and creating silly errands that were quite meaningless and spending an hour at Target buying stuff I didn't need and then going to the coffee shop that they had there. And then I would go out and sit in my car while my baby took a nap and I would scroll Facebook or read people's blogs. Hello, consumer, consumer, consumer. And on all levels, what was I creating? Nothing. <laughs> right? I mean, how often have you found yourself falling into that? It's very um, automatic for us here in the United States because it's our culture. Do you see? So when you have endeavored to create this freedom in your life, you must first identify where are you living on autopilot? Where are you just accepting status quo as what's normal and what's right for you? I'm going to pause because I want to hear from you all. You can unmute, take a turn, unmute and share. Where have you accepted status quo as normal? And how is it not creating freedom for you? This could be in how it relates and how you spend money. This could be loans that we hear all around about how even buying a house is an asset and an investment. I believe that's not true. I don't believe that's true. I think that that's putting you as a cog into the wheel because then you're, you don't have an income producing asset. You are that you have this loan that you've got 30 years on. You're going to end up actually borrowing almost double what the value that you paid for was. Think about that, think about that. Like, whoa. When I started really understanding these numbers and identifying where I was just subscribing to status quo and was acceptable and normal in our culture, I, that was a wake up moment for me. So share with me now, what has been a wake up moment for you now that we just discussed that? And what have you been accepting as status quo? Don't be shy. Just tap your screen and press on mute. Sonia? Oh, no, we can't hear you. Uh-oh. Is there something plugged into your phone? Is that why we can't hear you? <laughs> tap your screen and see if it will let you turn on the speaker. 
upper left. Can you see it? Ah, shoot. All right, tap your answer in the comments for us in the chat. I'll read it out loud. <laughs> okay, who would like to share? Sorry, that didn't work. And if you are dialed in, you just press star six to unmute. Like I'm the teacher in Ferris Bueller. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> and I have to call you on, out by name, just like when I was a teacher. I would call on my students by name and they would answer. Mm. Once somebody speaks up, everyone will be braver. There we go. Melissa wants to speak up. Okay, you're unmuted. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I must try to figure out how to do this. Um, I think that I spend way too much time dwelling on other people's progress and oh yeah and and my personal negativity or negative things that happen in my life. Mhm. Mm yep. You know, I I I feel like I I spend too much time saying, oh, my husband doesn't support me. Oh, this doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. I don't have a runner. I don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. And what do they? And yeah. that's my big thing. Okay. So how are you going to work through that? Because uh, act, what you are doing is you're, you are a consumer in the sense that you're consuming looking at these other people's progress and looking at this and paying attention to that, right? That's consuming. That's, that's not creating. Right. So first step is the identification of where you've been on autopilot and how that sabotages your progress. So well done. Next step you is you need to write a plan. <laughs> Say so again. I'm here to figure this out. <laughs> Yes, I understand. Well, the second step is you write a plan. What's a better use of your time? Okay. Is that right? more like time blocking, time more focused? Yes, of course. On more things yep. that are forward moving to, to make me so that I don't have the kind of time that I spend as a consumer. Exactly. Okay. Because comparisonitis is a form of sabotage. And right now, you know, we need to identify where we sabotage ourselves because when we sabotage ourselves, we are not living in our gifts and we are not living in our greatness, which means we're not contributing to the world, which is what we're all meant to do here. True. I live in somebody else's greatness. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. So at the heart of this, I think for you might be worthiness. Ah. Uh, so I want you to adopt that daily affirmation. I am worthy of financial abundance. I am worthy of the success that my heart desires because e each of you on here right now desire success. But if you're not affirming for yourself that you're worthy of it, then how will you ever achieve it? True. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do, do you have any questions about that? No, I don't. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for raising your hand. <laughs> Let's see how I lower that. Okay. Next, if you want to speak up, you can raise your hand or you can... Um, just type it in the comments too. Richard says, I keep telling myself that someone has to be at the bottom and it must be me. All right, Richard, let's change that. Type in the opposite and let's see what's true for you because that's a lie. Sonia says, I'm on autopilot with getting up and going to work and not feeling creative or excited. Yes, Sonia, that sounds like burnout. What do you think? 
I bet in the comments if it hits the nail on the head. <laughs> um, who else? Raise your hand if you would like to share. And what comes up for you? Luz, I'm so interested to hear what's transformed for you since our retreat in Palm Springs. I know you don't want to speak up. I'm calling you out. You're eating a snack, which is, of course, the perfect time I called you out. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Okay. I had a feeling you were going to call me out, Miss Elise. Um, uh, what we're talking about right now and what you mentioned um, from the last time we've seen each other, I wanted to say something yesterday, but um, we called the, the meeting off. But as soon, I have to say what we talked about was toxic people. Yep. And um, as soon as I got home, okay, you know how we took some pictures of the group and it was an awesome time. And obviously some of us were there, you know, got there early in the morning and from a long drive or whatnot. So I know I wasn't looking or feeling my best, but I still wanted to take the pictures because, you know, I had a good time. It was a positive thing for me. And I came home, you know, with that mindset, like, okay, this is my homework. I need to work on this. I need to read, you know, the book that you have given me to read. And I even found myself being embarrassed to talk to my husband about what we talked about, but I felt the need that I had to tell him how I felt. And fortunately he supported me in, in everything that I had mentioned or what, you know, the slapping of the hand that I get, you know, usually when I talk to you, I mean, in a positive way. Um, yeah. Uh, but then uh, my mom calls me, well, my toxic person, I mean, I don't want to say too much, but first thing I get was, you know, that picture you took on, you know, on your group, you look like you gained a little weight, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I'm, try I'm trying to explain, you know, I'm not there for, to look my best, you know, I was there to listen to what I, you know, to learn from the best, not because of, of my appearance. It's because obviously something is blocking me from wanting to, ex, you know, excel. And it was just hard for me to tell her, like, you know what, you're the reason why I, I'm not able to excel. Like, so, you're the one that keeps holding me back to not being able to reach over the other side of the hill. Does that make sense? I mean, yep. So I find myself not answering her calls. Um, not that I don't want to listen to her, but it's just, again, it's the same BS every day. And I'm, I find myself listening to other people's problems. Not that I'm susceptible to what they um, need or I have nothing to do with it, but I know I'm the only person that these people could go to or they confide in me to come to, to me, and which is fine. I'm okay with that, but when it starts to be an everyday thing, it literally wears me down. And it's like, if you, if you don't want to give me your opinion, you know, don't want to hear my opinion, then don't tell me how you feel. Yeah. Cause I'm going to give you how I feel. And if you don't like it, then don't tell me. And that's just one thing that blows up and it never ends well. So even today I got that call and I'm like, you know, mom, I'm kind of busy right now. And just, I can't talk to you right now. And I just found myself doing that. And I literally had to express, you know, everything to my husband and tell him like, look, this was said, this is how I'm reacting. I could use, you know, your support. And he 100% said, you know, like, I'm really sorry you're going through this, but I'm really glad that you were able to be around a group of people that are trying to succeed and, and hopefully, you know, we'll get everything, we'll get through this. I mean, as long as I see that and, and I have that support and just try to get rid of the things that keep holding me down. Cause I did find myself like taking that step back again, but I'm like, no, I can't let this come over me. I can't, I'm like, I'm done. I, I, I'm done looking back. I'm, I just need to keep going forward. So. Yes, so good. Thank you, Lise. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's so good, though. So, and I want you to lose maybe make up, wake up when you wake up every morning. Do a, a like even three minutes, and this is applies to everybody if you want to do this. But I call it goal journaling, where you write down what it is that's your goal. Like, what's your thirty day goal, ninety day goal, six month goal, five year goal, whatever it is. Write it down, and do it every day. 
because that affirms what it is that you are doing that day. It's your compass, right? Because otherwise we wake up and there's like a zillion things that can be going on. And if you are one of the people that has a bad habit of turning your phone on and turning on Facebook or checking email, texts, or messages first thing in the morning, well, that's one of the things you could change very easily and will have a big influence on your day, right? I actually got a call this morning. Well, not this morning. I'm sorry. On Saturday, because again, I'm trying to get back on the wagon again of being my usual positive, happy self. And mm. somebody called out to me and said, you know, I, I just trying to figure out how you're always positive. I'm like, look, I, I have my issues too. I'm not going to lie, you know, but right. if, if obviously what I'm sharing is helping you, then by all means, let me give you the book that my friend gave me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's, I kind of just sharing the wealth and hoping that this person will also, you know, it'll help her, you know, go through whatever issues she's going through as well. Love it. Yeah. So you're helping yeah. in, all, in all aspects, believe me. <laughs> Yay, I'm so glad. Well, there's a great verse that I want you all to write down. And if you don't mind typing it in the chat, it's Isaiah 41.10. And it's, do not be afraid for I am with you. So, I mean, at the heart of it all is God is always with each and every one of us, every single moment of every single day. And yet, what separates us from God? It's our minds that are choosing to try to do it on our own. Our ego edges God out and, uh, let, and wants to be in control of everything. So write down that verse. Repeat it to yourself daily if you're feeling anxiety or you're afraid, a little bit afraid of what we're doing here. Um, maybe you haven't spent the time going through these things. And that's fine because personal growth is a journey. But I want you to write to, as we, um, unless, well, hang on. Do we have anyone else that would like to share today? Because then I'm going to give you an assignment here in a minute. I'm checking my mic. Can you hear me? Yes, now I can. Oh my gosh. Okay. Joe, Yay. Joe um, helped me to um, problem shoot. So thank oh, you. Great. Joe. Wonderful. Um, so yes, burned out. I feel like I get up every morning. I go through the same routine. Um, and I have a hard time having a hard time trying to, um, just break that cycle of autopilot. I have to have the job at this point for my overhead. Yeah. Um, so I can't walk away from it, or I would certainly do that. Okay, so we need to problem shoot on how to get you over feeling burnt out about your job. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because currently in your current posi position in your business, you're not ready to walk away from the salary job. So right. we got to get you back into the mindset of embracing rather than resisting. Right. So what do you think would be good? How could you um, help support yourself in that? What do you think? Um, for one, um, my morning devotional helps with that. And being a nurse practitioner um, is a, is a position of providing a service to others. So that's yep. something. That, you know, once I get to work, I'm usually good, but it's yeah. getting there. And then it's when I come home and just being, having put in a, a, a day of yeah. work and critical thinking and giving to others and then having the, space, whether that's physical body, emotional, mental, mental, spiritual, to then put into my Lavelle business. That's my daily yeah. struggle for balance that I, mm -hmm. that I, I mean, I, I've got this week off. Right. This, this series came at a perfect time for me because Good. I'm, yes. Yes, I'm pouring into myself this week, pouring in. Awesome. Into so perfect. I've got some ideas. So you're ready? I'm ready. I got my pen. Good girl. And I got some questions. Okay. 
First question, how many hours of sleep are you getting per night? Uh, this week, eight or nine. <laughs> and Otherwise, is that? Uh, Joseph will uh, agree that I don't get enough sleep, probably uh -huh. five or six hours a night, and that's a problem. Okay, and how can you change that? Um, go to bed earlier. Just set an alarm an hour before I'm going to bed so yes. that at that hour I can start my wrap up of the day. Yes. And self care. What are you doing for self care? Um, typically, a bath in the evening. I mm -hmm. enjoy reading any kind of self development that totally feeds me. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got a new relationship with a man. And so time with him, whether it's, he lives three hours away. So whether it's over the phone yeah. or in person. Yeah. Not, the Good. in person is not very often, but it's. Yes, so. yes. Well, okay. So um, the nightly bath, uh, don't take your phone in the bath. Okay. Um, light a candle, dim the lights, Epsom salt. Epsom okay. salt is high in magnesium, which you know helps the body to relax Absolutely. and detox toxins. And uh, lavender essential oil, which you probably are doing those things, right? Yeah. Good. And then um, making sure that you're drinking plenty of water, herbal tea. Um, what about exercise and time outside in nature? Uh, very little. Okay. I think that needs to become a top priority. Okay. And um, here's what I've learned. When we start to prioritize ourselves, our businesses actually grow as a result. We kind of have this ego playing tug of war in our heads saying, well, I can't go do, take a walk in nature and unplug for 20 minutes because I might be needed, right? Our ego wants to be needed all the time. Yep. And if we're not being needed, we're going to create the need. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. And so, um, but I do know this when I have seen it again and again in myself and in the businesses of people I've mentored, uh, when we prioritize ourselves, we have more to give and everything feels more rewarding because we are in the moment Okay, and it's nourishing to the body and soul, mind, body, and soul, I should say. Um, you probably also know this when we are always around electronics, it's all these positive ions and they mess us up energetically. So getting out into nature, especially around water, there's a lot of negative ions. That's why if you ever feel super confused, you're trying to make some decisions, go meditate near water. It could be a lake, a pond, a creek, a river, a beach. Uh, Elise, I'm 10 minutes from the Atlantic Ocean and the beach. So I have no excuse to not be <laughs> on the beach more. Does the beach help you feel connected to your Absolutely. spirit? Absolutely. Absolutely. How often do you go there? <laughs> exactly. Five times a year? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you all see what just happened there? Your yeah. mind is trying to control everything, Sonia. Right. It is. It's time for you to let go of that control and trust God. Okay. He has a plan for you. The moment you let go of it, like it's that video I did yesterday where we haven't forgiven and then we're, we're, we're clutching our hands so we cannot give or receive and we're like scarcity minded instead of abundantly minded. Do you mm -hmm. remember that video? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're, it's interesting because I know you, so I'm going to go there mm -hmm. um, because you have a heart of service. You've mm -hmm. chosen a profession of service. It's also a, cere a cerebral profession, right? So there's that, that interplay of the, the type A and the feeler, the empath. And truthfully, you're going to find success and love what you're doing in your business and as a nurse practitioner when you are operating from the intuition versus up in the brain. So you've got to get out of your head and down into your heart in both of your businesses. Yep. And I can say this because I know that is a very common trait for many people that are in the medical field, uh, as well as teachers, you know, there's that service component, but then there's also the cerebral component. And so it does, there's almost a disconnect between 
being spiritual and doing your work. What I want to see you do, especially during these 10 days, is make the decision that you don't have to be either or. You can be and. Take a stand for the and. And so I also know that, that you're and yep. intuitive. Yes. Yes. Be intuitive. Pray for it. Pray, pray for God to strengthen your intuition. Pray for him to make it abundantly clear when he is speaking to you. Rather than you, you talk, like, because here's, here's what I've noticed you all. Okay. So for example, for example, um, I haven't been, I haven't written any checks to charities, uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. This morning I woke up and I do my, I do my abide app with the prayer and meditation. Then I'm thinking to myself, gosh, I really would like to contribute to one of the nonprofits I've been supporting. And I wonder which one I should do. And then immediately I get an email, literally like within two minutes from the group where we built the schools. And she was saying the kids have, the winter is now receding and the kids are going back to school. And she was talking about the level up classrooms that we built. Now we've built five. And I thought, and the first thought that pops into my head for the money I need to contribute is $10,000. That's my intuition. Immediately my brain goes, oh no, that's not, that's too much. Like do the math. Da, da, da. I'm like, oh my gosh, what the heck? <laughs> like, <laughs> so I want you to start to pay attention to your intuition, and because the intuition will be the I call it an intuitive hit. It's like boom. It's a knowing. It's deep in your gut, right? You know it, but then the brain tries to go, but da 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 da, mm -hmm. and that but da 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 da. We've got to like say, uh uh, that's not from God. God prompts me with what's true. God prompts me with what's true. And then I want you to put it on your calendar. You're going to the beach. I mean, is it unreasonable to say three times a week? I'm going to make it happen. Okay. Why not? And the first time will be tomorrow morning. There you go. Sunrise. Yep. Yep. I want you to yep. see that sunset. And I want to see those pictures and videos. Okay. I'll do it. Your accountability. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, me too. I think that's good. Um, okay. So, and I think for you too, like the burnout, some of the burnout is the lack of sleep. We know this about the body. And again, I feel my intuition is telling me the lack of sleep is a result of you're trying and you're pushing and you're trying to control the outcome in your business. And you're, you're desperate to go and do the business full time, but the nurse practitioner job pays the good salary and so then you're like pushing it it's like that grabby feeling again versus the letting it flow feeling right am i right absolutely yep that's the struggle yeah so this i think will help you with this um these this self-care pieces and prioritizing exercise nutritious food really being thoughtful i always my our rule is no viewing and chewing <laughs> i like it <laughs> yeah if viewing or sorry <laughs> when you're eating it's not meant for you to be on your phone it's not meant for you to be watching something your brain doesn't need entertainment while you're eating you should be savoring what you eat thinking about each bite feeling the gratitude for every single person that played a role in bringing the food to your table blessing them blessing god for his faithfulness and abundance How's that sound? Sounds perfect. <laughs> Good. Anything else that you can think of? Anything else pop into mind that you'd like to change? Um, I think that really the burnout and, and I certainly used to come from more of a place of intuition. So that's mm. that nail right on the head there. I've gotten away from that. I've definitely gotten away from physical activity in the, in the past, you know, 12, 18 months. So I think those are great places to start. Yeah, good. I'm looking forward to your progress. I would love to see you posting. Um, and, I'll, and I'll encourage everybody as you do this process, as my kids are climbing back into the car here. <laughs> <laughs> As you do this process, I would like um, for you, when you do post on Facebook, when it's your work time on Facebook, because we're now going to be very 
clear with ourselves when we are on Facebook or social media and when we are not, because otherwise it feels like you're on it all the time. Um, but like go on and hashtag breakthrough or hashtag transformation, because then each of us can find those posts. I think it's important to mark when you have noticed a breakthrough for yourself. Like for you today, this is a breakthrough, right? right. And this is a transformation. This is a time for you to now transform the limiting belief that, um, that the freedom or the success in your business is hard, that it requires work all the time, right? right. That, that, in, that you are making just enough and that's okay. It's time for you to identify where these limiting beliefs are now being transformed to what's true. And everyone, you can all participate in that. You can post your post in the event wall as well if you want to share that. Just start it off with hashtag breakthrough or hashtag transformation. So anything that came up for you today or yesterday or anything that comes up for you as we go through this journey, you can do that there. All right. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else like to share? Okay. I'm going to give you a quick journaling assignment. And I think this is a great, this is powerful because um, it really helps you to slow down and decide what's important. And I would also like you to make a little video reflection in the event. If you don't mind, you can do a video reflection. I think it's powerful because, yes, you are meant to be seen and we want to hear from you. So anyone that's starting to go there and say, oh, nobody wants to hear me, blah, 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 stop it. Um, we do. And there's community here. So I would like you to feel like you know you can do that and be supported nobody's judging you and keep your videos short probably about three minutes we don't need to ramble on just kind of share your answer here or what your transformation is today and i'll post again i'll post that on the group but um the the assignment is write out why you want to dedicate time to your personal growth and where in your life are you very impatient Okay, so that again, that's write out why you want to dedicate time to your personal growth and where in your life are you very impatient. Again, you can share your journaling or your video on that post in the event. I'll go post that. Okay, any questions, clarification? All right, thanks for showing up today. We're excited that you made it on today and that everything worked for us and we didn't get <laughs> too many glitches to get started. So have a great day and we will see you again at the same time and same place. Bye-bye.